All right, what's up, peace man? Welcome back to another exciting episode with your boy Lionel B from the Lionel B Show. Today we have a very special guest in the building with us today, man. She goes by the name of Denise. Y'all have probably seen her from so many different movies, especially Why Did I Get Married with Tyler Perry. Miss Denise, how you doing today, ma'am? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Excited, excited to have you here. Aww. Thank you, know? you. And let me tell you, you, you really played that role on uh, Why Did I Get Married. <laughs> Super. I mean, the look, everything. You had everybody hating you. So let's let's talk. Let's talk about that. Um, and what was the response like from people when they would kind of see you out in the streets? Like, I'm uh, still getting cussed out. <laughs> um, <laughs> I would say. You know, here's what the the crazy thing is. Whenever you get that kind of a reaction from folks, I took it as, damn, I did a good job. This yes. is awesome. You know, when you can make folks respond that way. And I mean, literally, some folks are really pissed off. <laughs> like, this, again, this is Sheila. But this is Jill Scott. So anybody who does anything to cross over Jill, like, you got problems, you know? Right, so right. it was so awesome. And, and you know, these days, because people, like, immediately, it's either Browns or it's Why Did I Get Married? I think of it as such a compliment because I'm like, oh, my God. It's like I was a part of a classic. You right. know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like, you know, people talk about love and basketball, you know, best man. And I'm just like, you know, why did I get married is oftentimes a movie that people reference. So, I mean, to come out of the gates with my first big movie, you know, being that and being a part of that caliber of cast. I mean, I was pinching myself every day like, wow. oh, my God, this is Janet Jackson. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so it was, I mean, and that happened like a year and a half after I, quote, fell into acting and came out here. So, again, shout out to Tyler for giving me that kind of a platform. But, um, yeah, it was it was pretty impressive. And, yes, I still get cussed out or side-eyed at least <laughs> till this day. So. so people don't even say, hey, they just look at you, give you the, the stink face. and Yeah, I get a lot of, oh, that's true. Mm, you want to play a train? Oh, you know, it's like I always get that kind of thing. Or sometimes, oh, my God, girl. She was like, I like you, but I hated you. Why did I get married? I was like, okay, thank you <laughs> so much for that. So it doesn't bother you at all, does it sound like? No, not at all. I, I consider it an honor, like seriously. So yeah, the only times that, like I said, you know, somebody really wanted to jump me was like right in the beginning and, you know, they didn't have any idea who I was. I was just coming out the gate. So I guess, you know, they took me as being the same kind of chick as Trina. So I was like, oh my God, you know. <laughs> and then after that, that's what was crazy. Every movie, like after that, had me stealing men and stealing money. It's like that was my thing, you know. Like the, like, <laughs> like the, the, the villain. Yeah, I mean, people Always say, "Oh, I don't want to be typecast or whatever." I was like, "Well, shoot, I'll just ride this wave until the wheels fall off. That's cool." But yeah, everything after that was stealing men and stealing money. So, yeah, I made quite an impact, which is uh, a little different from who I actually am, but I'll take it. So, where do you draw that that inspiration from to be such a a villainous person? You know what. Person? everybody can tap into different sides of their personality. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not the artist that's like, um, and again, I only recently had um, a role that required that, mm -hmm. but I'm not, I'm not the kind or whatever that has to, you know, be method. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times actors have to live like um, Jamie Foxx, for instance, whenever Jamie Foxx portrayed Ray Charles, like he had to, get his mannerisms down. He had to study him. He had to like really go in depth, you know, for that character. But very few times do we, I would say, have an opportunity to portray characters like on that level. You know, um, of course it happens, but for me, it was only until recently. I just, I just play, you know what I'm saying? I just play, I have fun. I just tap into different things or whatever. And just when I read the, uh, the script, find a part of me or whatever that I can just kind of insert in there because in order for it to be natural, you have to have some sort of a personal, you know, uh, connection, you know, to the character. So I don't know, for the most part, I just have fun. I mean, I don't think that I have multiple personalities, but maybe that's what <laughs> I mean, I don't think I'm bipolar or anything, you know, but it's really, for me, it's not that, you know, that, that challenging, you know, per se, but um, it's just fun. I just have fun with it. Every time I get a character or whatever, I just kind of tackle it head on. Don't mm -hmm. judge, you know, who the character is and just kind of, you know, put in a little Denise sprinkle or whatever and give mm -hmm. it my all. So I just I just have fun with it. So do you find that casting directors, they typically want you in that 
that type of role? Because let me say, like you said, it's kind of typecasting a little bit, but you you think they're like, oh, she's great for. Well, you know, I think it depends on what is the last thing they saw. You know, I've been very fortunate and blessed to where, yeah, it may be a typecast for a moment, but then it'll switch gears. Like, I guess you would say after that, I did a movie called uh, For the Love of Ruth, right? And okay. so that was, you know, gospel, you know, based and all this fun stuff. Gary Dordan was in it. Um, oh, my God. There were so many people. I can't even remember everybody. <laughs> oh, but anyway, yeah, they were in that. And it was a drama. And it was a really, really um, heartfelt, you know, this woman, the pain and all the stuff that she had to go through. For me, it was my first time doing that. It was the first time being the lead of a movie. And this the first time I had to tap into that many emotions. Right. Oh, wow. And um, oh, and Loretta Devine, duh, that's what oh, I'm man. forgetting. James Pickens Jr., Grey's Anatomy, and Loretta Devine, for goodness sakes, how could I forget that? <laughs> um, but for me, it was like the pressure of, oh my God, I am like gonna make or break this film if I don't, you know, turn in the right performance. But, you know, after that, I kind of got into, you know, really high intense drama, like, you know, I the, the crying on cue and just, you know, having to, to check out and just check in and free fall into these characters like that was for a time too. like that was like a, a serious stretch. In fact, I, I think I'm kind of still in that stretch and I'm like, I want to laugh like oh. <laughs> comedy, <laughs> you <right>? know. <laughs> So it's like, you know, I had the whole, you know, meet the brown scene, comedy chick, woo! And then I had the, you know, steal your men, steal your money chick. Now I'm like downtrodden, pitiful, like, oh, whoa, me chick. And now, <laughs> hopefully with unknown, I'm coming into the boss chick, you know, DA, you know, I'm going to help get you sucker kind of chick. So I don't know. <laughs> So yeah, tell tell us more about that project. So you're gonna be kind of like a like an action type hero, or you know, action type? I actually do voice over an action hero, DC Comics. That's a whole okay. other subject. But no, I'm not necessarily a superhero. But I'm the district attorney. Master P is the um, what do you call it? The the mayor, right? So you can tell in the opening sequence that we both dirty. Like there is nothing wholesome about these two. We are two very sketchy characters. And the cool thing about it is that Laz actually put this movie in the can like a few months ago. He was holding on to it for like the perfect time. Well, after we had all worked together on Never and Again, I assuming that he got inspired. Like he really and truly liked P and I's vibe together. And so he created these characters and was like, that's it. He was like, you know, that's what my movie is missing. So he basically shot these scenes and inserted it into the unknown that you're going to uh, check out. Because I know you're going to check it out on Amazon Prime. For but sure. it was so cool how he did it. And we open up, you know, the whole movie and you'll see little tidbits or whatever sprinkled throughout. So it was really cool how he did it for me in the mm -hmm. beginning, though. It was confusing because I was like, OK. How does this relate to everything else in the movie, Laz? I was like, okay, we have our scenes, but how does this actually? Don't worry about it. Do you think <laughs> I got it? Okay, but Laz, I'm like a type A personality. What the hell am I doing? Why am I doing it? What is my motivation? I hate that phrase, but I was like, what about why am I doing this? He was like, Denise, come on set. I know what you're capable of. Just do. I was like, okay, all right, I'll do it. So. He and I started playing. I don't know if it's the Louisiana connection or what, but we started vibing, play, playing around with the lines. And, you know, he was like, that's what I needed. He was like, that's what I wanted. So when I actually saw the movie at the premiere, I was just as freaked out and on a roller coaster ride as everybody else. So I was like, oh my God. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I'm grown. I'm not used to all that stuff. Okay. <laughs> My heart is a very sensitive place. I can't do all that stuff anymore. But I mean, when they say psychological thriller, that's exactly what this thing is. That is super cool. And is that available now or when is that coming out? It is. It came out on Amazon Prime streaming on October 1st. So we are okay. a when you want it, whenever you want it, we are there. Just make sure you do a hashtag unknown. There's a few unknowns from what I understand, but this okay. one's hashtag unknown. It looks like, you know, buildings burning and all this other stuff. Like I said, it was like three quarters of the way that I started putting this stuff together. I was like, oh, hence <laughs> the reason psychological thrill. It just messes with your mind for a while. And then you like, oh, snap, that's how this really, oh, okay. So you start putting the pieces of the puzzle together. But, you know, Laz obviously has uh, even bigger things for these characters. So if you guys Go and stream this bad boy. You'll definitely get your sequel. That's what's up. 
Yes. Now, at the end, is it going to be kind of confusing or are we going to be able to understand and, you know, are you guys going to leave us hanging? Because I know some some movies, y'all kind of leave us hanging. We just like, dang, what's going to, what happened? You're going to definitely um, want to know what's happening next, but no, you're not going to be left with like, what the hell, man? I spent a whole damn hour and a half doing this thing and I don't know what the hell I So no, you will definitely not have that kind of a feeling. You'll definitely get some sort of closure, but you'll definitely know that there's more to the story. That's so, awesome. um, yeah, so you'll be able that. to get satisfied, but you will be like, damn, ooh, snap, this thing could really, ooh, you know, you'll be interested in knowing what's next. Awesome. I could dig that. Yeah. So tell us about, about the other project you got. I know you got a project coming out with Bill Bellamy, just dropping what, this yes! week? Yes! It's what, oh my God. Okay, so we just closed the coffin on Halloween, and now we're just like singing Christmas carol. <laughs> carol. <Right>. So... <laughs> <laughs> on BET Plus this coming Thursday, we've got uh, Rich Christmas. And yes, I am in it. Um, Bill Bellamy's love interest in that one. There's a newcomer called Tyler Abram. She kills it. Her wardrobe yeah. alone, I was just like, God, dog. I mean, seriously? Like, you don't even have to know this is a rich, spoiled chick. You can just look at her wardrobe and tell, right? But it was just so awesome because I worked with Megamind um, before. And these folks, I mean, it's like all chicks at the top. OK, and they are just like running things like a well-oiled machine. And I started with them on their very first production. I did a show, uh, a movie called Secrets with Denise Lawton. And it ended up being like something that catapulted, you know, them into another stratosphere. And they have been working and cranking films out like left and right. So this was the first time I actually reunited with them. So it was almost like a homecoming of sorts. You know, most of the people that I started with there were still there. and. That's just a testament to how good they are and how much they take care of their family. Because the folks that were there, they are still diehard. So when you see folks growing and manifesting and, and you know, reaping these rewards and blessings together, that says a lot. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. When you come on to these sets and they got a whole bunch of turnover, you're like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like something because, wrong, something wrong there. Yeah, man, <laughs> but they're reaping the words and the blessings man together and it's just amazing to see how far you know they've come since then so uh it's awesome so shout out to tressa to maggie um all you guys tamara you guys are doing some major things and again just a whole bunch of boss chicks that are running things so it's That's fun nice. this is actually the third time i worked with bill oh wow for real yeah it's the third time he was um recurring on meet the browns Okay. He was actually Terry Vaughn's character, Renee's love interest on that. And mm. then I worked with him on a movie I did with Shamar Moore. And so he was actually Shamar's best friend in that particular movie. And now here we go again. And now we uh, each other's love interest. So it's really cool. That's my boy, man. He's a great guy. And he was on Wendy Williams. Oh, yeah. I seen that. I seen, the, uh, seen the ad he had. Yeah. Yeah, so that's yep. really cool, man. I'm proud of my fam. And then, oh, and then P was on the other one promoting Unknown. He was on the Cannon's new show. Oh, man. So you guys is running it up. Dude, look, <laughs> I'm just along for the ride, dude. I'm just like, Jesus done took the wheel, and I'm just going to ride this sucker to the wheel swallow. I know that's right. I know that's right. In a positive light, too. So that's real cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, so your character on Rich Christmas, um, is she nice or is she mean? Ooh, you kind of uh -huh. don't know. We kind of mm. don't know. She she does a few things that make you kind of think like, is this chick shady? Like, does she have another motivation for going after Mr. Rich or is she sincere? Mm. And so you will see as the story plays out whether or not she's sincere chick or not. I'll tell you what, though. Uh, little Miss Richie Rich does not like her at all. Um, so Daddy's a girl, huh? <laughs> so daddy's girl is like she's like staying staunch on her territory she's like this chick is not coming in here and like in a relationship with my daddy and i don't know what her motivation is so needless to say i got some issues with miss rich mm -hmm. <laughs> all right so that's dope so we do definitely super excited about all the new projects you got uh coming on tell us a little bit about your cooking line i know you have a cooking line out as well oh my god okay so i'm always ready to talk about louisiana girl culinary i was just you know, during the whole, um, <laughs> it's so funny because during the whole COVID thing, everybody became chefs and it's like <laughs> everybody was cooking and it was just like, what in the hell is going on? So I'm so happy because this thing officially launched in 2019. So when everybody was trying to find, you know, some kind of a hobby or whatever, it became a cooking thing. So Weezy and a Girl actually really thrived. <laughs> <during> <laughs> 
<laughs> during COVID. I mean, you know, I didn't have, you know, a storefront or whatever per se, but I am on several shelves down in Louisiana. I'm from a little town called Maurice, Louisiana, which is really close to the Gulf Coast, you know? So okay. we're like two hours uh, west of New Orleans, right? But um, yeah, I mean, beyond the mom and pop shops or whatever, we're online at WeezyAnnaGirl.com, uh, W-E-E-Z-I, a and a girl.com and right now is strictly spices we've got uh of course i always have a handy we got right here uh -huh. we got the low sodium version right here which was the initial version right mm -hmm. then there's hot and spicy there's original and there's a cinnamon sugar that my daughter had to have because she puts it on her toast all the time so oh, yeah. um, oh and it, it rims glasses really well for the holiday season mm -hmm. Whenever you've got these little, you know, the eggnog and all the rest of that stuff, it, it goes really good if you uh, rim the glass or whatever with the cinnamon sugar. Really good stuff. Okay. So um, that and now we're going to be expanding and we're working on pecan pralines. You said you're working on what? I'm sorry. Pecan pralines. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Some people say pralines. Some people say pralines. Some people say pecan candy. So whichever one it is that you like, we're actually working on... Um, that's the whole size behind this thing, man. You got to expand the recipes and stuff. And it's, it's, it's a, uh, I think acting is real easy compared to this kind of thing. Really? <laughs> <laughs> acting, I feel, is a walk in the park compared to this stuff, man. Just getting yeah. the traction and the branding and all that stuff. It's like, you can't take this stuff for granted, man. This is a huge undertaking, but it's so worth it. It's so near and dear to my heart. This pecan candy recipe is actually my, uh, you guys say grandma, I say mama, right? Mm. Back home, we call them mamas. That's her recipe. And I'm like the oh, only wow. one in my family that can recreate it. So, you know. Well, I'm from uh, Florida. We say pecans down here. So Y'all I mean. say, oh, and I hate pecans. I hate <laughs> when people say pecans. No, it's pecan, boy. It's pecan. pecan. I got to look that up and look at the, uh, you know, how you really pronounce it. Because you know how they had a little thing on a dictionary. We're going to have to see who's right on this I one. think it's a regional thing. You know what I'm saying? But people from my area, whatever, we scream and we're just like, ah, look, people pecan. Think we can. <laughs> yes, pecan, man. It's pecan. But, okay, uh, I'll, I'll let you have that one. I'll let let you me have, have that one, man. I mean, it's, but it's just like my last name. I get booty, I get boot, I get booty. And I'm just like, Lord have mercy. That's <laughs> not it. And then, oh, when I first moved here, people thought it was a stage name. I was just like, what the hell? No. <laughs> I was like, I'm doing the other part of acting, not the vivid entertainment acting. Like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> so, is, is that Creole? Is that like a what type of last name is that? It French? is. It's French. Yeah, and it it's really common back home. In fact, when you're on your way to New Orleans, you got an exit, right? You either go mm -hmm. to New Orleans, the New Orleans exit, or you go to now the town is pronounced Booty. So there's oh. no accent on the e or whatever. It's, it's pronounced Booty. So you, there's a whole town called Booty, Louisiana, baby. So that's your city. Got a whole city. Dude, that's what's on, up <laughs> <laughs> that's super cool yeah now, now tell me uh, a little bit about like what would be your your dream role or, or dream fill or also dream collaboration who would you <sighs> really want to get in the movie with you know what that's what i was kind of that was always my answer whenever i said that i wanted a movie to where i could transform and then it would require me to you know completely you know tap into another person like a biopic um I actually had an opportunity to do that recently. I, I put it out there in the atmosphere, took years for it to happen. And when it actually happened, I was like, oh crap, what did I just do? You know, it presented itself. And I mean, it was grungy. It was the most vulnerable, I guess you would say I had to be on camera and it was, it was scary, you know? Oh, and I was like, okay, well, Jesus, if you gave it to me, I'm pointing <laughs> over there because that's where my cross is over my, uh, uh -oh. my doorway. You know, I'm from the South. We got to have a cross in every doorway. Mm -hmm. Mama Betty is not having it. Okay. Jesus into every <laughs> corner, but I prayed for it. And so when the opportunity came, uh, uh, came up, I was like, well, I guess you said I'm ready. You know, I guess you said that I'm ready to take, because I think, again, we hear that all the time. He saves us from ourselves. I've been mm -hmm. wanting it, but I don't think I was ready until recently to actually give it all I had and do justice to it. But it's a movie called um, Angie's uh, Cure. And basically this Carol, she's just, I mean, gutter. Like she's just hit rock bottom. She's strung out on drugs. She's verbally abusive, physically abusive. Um, for me, I wanted to do this so bad because I was like, I want to do a role where it's not about the hair. It's not about the makeup. It's not about being cute. It's strictly about the performance. 
And I think that once I realized that, I was like, oh, snap. Like, you know, I really have to blame. People be like, oh, her shoes are so cute. Oh, my God. No. (laughs) (laughs) They were going to be literally looking at the performance. And it was, I went on set. We did the rehearsal. Okay. I was like, great. Okay, cool. All right. I'm the first shot up on the very first shooting day. And it's the most intense scene that I have in this entire dang script. Like who did this to me and why, okay? (laughs) And so, honey, I did a whole lot of praying. I walked out on that set. And after that first shot got applause, I was like, all right, give it to you. Like, I just was like, I was like so emotional with it. I was like shaking, like it was crazy. It was like a 12 page scene. Oh man. And, um, yeah. So it was, like I said, one of the most uh, challenging um, shows that I've had yet. And this character, whatever, it it felt so good, but then it felt like I had to shed off, like just like you know layers of like ah, you know, I gotta I gotta wash this chick off of me because it was that it was that serious, you know. Wow. But I think after this, okay, so now I'm in this phase. This is what I'm gonna claim. So I'm a DA, right? Mm-hmm. And chicks, you know, toting the guns, kind of doing the thing. I want to do some gangster stuff. Uh-oh. I was going to say gangster shit, but I don't know what that is. <laughs> you good. You I, good. <laughs> yes, I want to, I'm chick, you know, I'm a country girl. I know how to handle my, handle my, you know, my gun and stuff. So I don't know, something, some boss chick stuff. I don't so, know. So, like set it out part two or something like that? Huh? What'd you say? Set it out part two? I will say set it up part two, set it off part two, uh, New Jack City, you know, mm. something like that. I think that would be really like really fun and really different and unexpected. Right. That'd yeah. Be I'll, I'll be here for it. I'll definitely be here for it. You're going to be here for it? Okay. I'll so be here for it. that out in the atmosphere, we're going to go ahead <laughs> on and claim that. So the DA chick in unknown is the part that's going to set off this new phase and craze right here, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. Pop, you know, pop, show me your pop, range. You, you gotta know show what? me your range. You know, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, man. It's just <laughs> fun. It's fun, and you know, in between, that's what somebody said. You know, how do you stay motivated? And I was just like, I have other things to pour myself into. Like my creativity has to be um, poured into something. I mean, we tap dance all the time, dude. I mean, between these self tapes, you know, we don't really go in the room the way we used to. But you're studying these sides, dude. Sometimes you start in 20-something pages or whatever. You got to have, look, I'm holding it right now. 20-something pages, you got to have taped or whatever and sent. A lot of times you get some crickets, dude. Mm. You know? A lot of times you get crickets and you don't hear anything. Or blessing on blessings, you get somebody you worked with before that calls you direct and says, hey, I got something for you. But in the meantime, in between time, you got to nurture your spirit and your creativity. And that's why... The whole Louisiana girl culinary situation. That's how that, you know, came into existence. I'm also now producing the own projects. My manager and I, we were counting the other day. I was like, 17 years? Like, I've been in this game for 17 years, dude. And that blows my mind, you know? Especially because I was in advertising. Like, I didn't even fathom, you know, falling into this whole acting game. So when I got here, I was grown, okay? Okay. Some of these, these kids are starting out when they pop out the wound. I was grown when I got here, you know? Right. And so, you know, now to be able to have my own stories, you know, be inspiration to maybe giving another fellow actor, actress an opportunity to shine, nothing makes me more excited. You know what I'm saying? To see my own ideas pop up on page or writers who have submitted stuff to me, you know, years before and I couldn't do anything for them. I'm like, you know, look, I ain't got pulled like that. I don't have that kind of a, you know, grasp on the whole production side. But now after these years, you know, paying attention on set, asking the people that have, you know, allowed me to shadow them, I'm in a position now to where I can hopefully give other people that opportunity, you know? So what so, what what main genres um does your production company handle? Is it mainly like television, film, or? Dude, I do it all. Two of the projects that I have that are most alive right now that have the most traction because uh, we had a pitch actually two weeks ago for one of it's a series. It's a dramedy series that is set in New Orleans. So mm. that's one thing, and then I've got another film that is also set in uh, Southern Louisiana. So that one is actually inspired by some family members of mine. One of the um, former Meet the Browns executives, she had seen a documentary and called me and was like, hey, 
do you know these people and this, that, and the other? I'm like, yeah. I was like, that's my husband's third cousin and that's my second cousin. She was like, what? The couple. Oh. She was like, what? And I was like, yeah. I was just like, yeah. You, I was like, I, I got them right here. You want to call? And she's like, what? <laughs> and so we started that whole process, dude. It's going on three years. It's going on three years. But that's how that's how long it can take. It can take a decade plus or whatever it takes. If you look at some of the most amazing movies, sometimes it took blood, sweat, and tears of years for this thing to come to fruition. So it takes time. Sometimes you push, 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 you pitch, 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 and you got to put that sucker on the shelf and grow some dust on it. And then all of a sudden it's the right time. You know what I'm saying? Again, his time, not ours. So it, it, it's all, you know, it's, it's all, um, I guess you would say a lesson in love. You know, it's got to be something that you're very, very passionate about to keep it alive. But uh, those two projects in particular have hometown connections. You know, so that's part of the reason why I'm not going to stop until they see the light of day. Until you guys are blessed enough to partake in these journeys or whatever. I'm not going to stop. That's real. That's real. That's very, very uh, motivating and inspiring as well. Thank you. Thank you. So with you being the big star that you are um, going back home, you know, how is that? How do people treat you there? <laughs> well, I was going to say in Los Angeles, I mean, it's fewer far between. I always lie. I was like, yeah, they got bigger fish to fry. I live like <laughs> literally across the highway, not not across the street. OK, don't be <laughs> thinking that. OK, I'm not in Calabasas, but I see the Kardashians, you know, up at Topanga Mall and stuff like that. So they ain't worried about me too much. OK, uh, but when I go home to Louisiana, the mm. mask has kind of helped. I'm kind of like who wearing a mask, <laughs> 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 you know? I'm the girl, I want to hug, I want to take a picture. Like, I'm so down for all that stuff, right? But with the whole COVID thing, you know, I'm a cop COVID crazy. So I'm like, I ain't trying to hug a <laughs> You know, in Louisiana, right. they don't want to wear their masks and stuff. So oh, I'm man. always a little squeamish. So, honey, I will wear my mask any chance I get. But it's nice. You know, the fact that the hometown can look at you, you know, and be inspired by you in some yeah. way. And it's not just with regards to entertainment. You know, like I said, I was a small town girl, grew up on a dang farm in backwoods, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to get out of Louisiana. I'll be honest with you. Like, that was my motivation. Like, I was yeah. in high school, top of my class. I needed a scholarship so I could get my behind to LSU and I could get my behind out of Louisiana. And guess what? All my, my heart is over there because I now, in hindsight, have a clearer picture of what matters in life. Seriously, I had a full circle moment. The the simplicity, the simplicity, simple life that I not detested, but I really was like, uh, not mm -hmm. fond of when I was there is now what I admire most about where I come from. Oh, wow. It so, is so still it, remaining like humble and. You know. Yes. And that's just who I am. Like, he was just like, oh, my God, you're so nice. And I'm just like, yeah, I am. Because they're equate me with a character. Right. But that's just that is just the core of who I am, the core of my being. I can't be anything but me. I'm a simple girl. You know, I'm a simple girl doing, you know, blessed to do more extraordinary things. And the fact that the hometown or whatever is inspired by this journey man, give it to me all day. You know, anytime they ask me to go and speak at a school, you know, to do this, that, and the other, do a lot of speaking engagements, not so much, you know, thanks to COVID, but it's awesome. You know, I get to go back to my old elementary school, my high school, gave the address or whatever for that. It's just, it makes, it keeps me humble and it keeps me, like I said, in hindsight, even more appreciative of, you know, how I was raised, you know? Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. In fact, yeah. sometimes people I say Mr. and Ms. or whatever, and you know, thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> people just like, don't call me that. It makes me feel old. Don't yeah, say I guess that's a southern thing because we say ma'am all the time, but you know, you say it to people in, in different coasts and they get like really offended. They get insulted. Yeah. I know. On, I'm just like, I'm like, that's normal for us. Yeah. And I'm just like, it's a matter of respect. I'm not saying you old and stuff, but you know, even, even kids, like if they check me out in the grocery store, oh, thank you, baby. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> do you have your say? Yes, ma'am, I do. And they're like 12. I mean, it don't matter. It's just a level. <laughs> so, what do, they, what, what do they want people to say? Just yes or? I don't, yeah. And I'm just yeah. like, my mama would have knocked me out if I just right, said, right. Or yes, you know. 
I don't right. know. It's part of who we are. You know, you can't shed that stuff, man. Facts. Yeah. I guess I guess if you're older and you're from like another area, I guess ma'am is appropriate. Like, I don't know, like Cali or something like that, you know, then you can Yeah. I don't, know, I, I don't get it. In Louisiana, no. it's uh, in Louisiana I get way less that, but in California, I really have mm. to watch the no ma'am, thank you, this, that, and the other because people are get offended. I mean, you out here. <laughs> Honey, everybody, no one wants to say their age. Everybody's like all consumed with that. And so I just, I don't even, I try my best not to even say it because people get offended real quick. Yeah. Real quick. And it's just well, like it's Southern hospitality. That's what we have though, you know. What's that? I said Southern hospitality. That's what we on though down here, you know. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. So tell the, tell the fans where they can find you, where they can interact with you. You know, where they can go on your DMs and complain about your, your, your character <laughs> while they get me. <laughs> Stay out the DMs. Stay out okay? the DMs, yeah. Look, first of all, Mattel, look, I'm grown, but I ain't that grown. All the folks with the AARP cards that are like 80-something <laughs> trying to holler in the DMs, I'm not going to respond. So thank you. I'm flattered, but no thank you. Um, I will <laughs> But you can always, always find me um, every Wednesday. As a matter of fact, I do a show called Louisiana Wednesday. So I'll have guests on for that. Oh. Um, and, you know, this week or whatever, we have a guy or whatever from Hollywood that does stunt work. You know, so I try to bring a little bit of Hollywood or whatever to the hometown folks. So you guys can catch me on that. It's at 9, um, 9 a.m. PST. So uh, if you guys want to uh, check that out, Louisiana Wednesdays. Look, I got my mug right here. Oh, yeah. Hey. Always got my yeah. products ready, baby. So um, I've got, you know, I got a lot of, you know, selfish self-promotion going on. Uh, Southern Modified. This is what I did with Chef Jannard Wells. Actually, he was the guy who helped me expand my recipe for the Louisiana um, Girl Seasonings. He and I wrote the Southern Modified, and now we're working on Southern Mod Modified, the remix. So we got another Ooh. cookbook coming at you first quarter of next year. Uh, the Louisiana Girl Spices, you can find on LouisianaGirl.com. So that's W-E-E-Z-I. A N A girl.com. You can get the uh, spices, you can get t shirts, and you will be able to get the pecan candy real soon. Uh -oh. um, pecan. And, yeah, pecan, <laughs> pecan. <laughs> I'm going to put that on the thing so people can. Uh, pecan, know, not know pecan. To go there. You know what? Have a, <laughs> you can have a contest. Who says pecan? Who says pecan? There you go. Okay. The winner, should, yeah, lifetime supply, of, you know. Boom. <laughs> and you know what? Look, I'll give you, um, let me see what I'm going to give. I'll either give, because these, these little puppies go for, you know, quite a pop right now, just because, you know, we need to go ahead on and expand beyond the region. It's but right. um, either they get a spice or they get a t-shirt. You want to do that? I like that. Okay. Like that. So whoever I'm comes out ahead, but I'm going to come out ahead because I'm the one giving up the product. Okay. So you let me know for your swag, for your folks or whatever, they'll either get Whichever one of their spices that they want, okay? okay. Or they'll get a Louisiana Monami t shirt. That's on LouisianaGirl.com. So check that out. And it says Louisiana Monami, which is my friend. Okay. Louisiana, my friend. A lot of the guys are like, I ain't wearing no Louisiana Girl t shirt. I'm just like, it's not. I represent. I represent. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Louisiana Monami, Louisiana, my friend. Okay. Um, so you guys can check that out. Instagram, it's uh, Denise Boutet. So D E N I S E underscore Boutte. Somebody took my name, hijacked my name. So that's why I have the underscore Boutte. That's savage. People will be savage on there. I think they just do stuff like that on purpose sometimes. That's what I'm saying. See, that's why people, before they announce their child's name, they like gather up, you know, Blue Ivy Boy, Beyonce, and Jay Z. Make sure they yeah. grab every single way you could spell, spell Blue Ivy or whatever and, and owned it before they announced their child's name. Isn't that's that crazy? Smart. Yeah. Yeah. Even LouisianaGirl.com, I can't get Denise Boutet. So oh, I had to get Louisiana. So I was like, okay, well, I'm known as the Louisiana Girl, so I'm going to use that. But yeah, so Denise underscore Boutet and Instagram is Louisiana Girl is the uh, the culinary side of things. Louisiana so Girl. so can, you see my, can you see the ticker on the screen? I think I had Louisiana up. So Let's I'm see. changing it. Man, you know I can't see. That's small. You, w you can't see that? W-E-E-Z-I-A-N-A -E -E girl.com. That's it. All right, cool. That's so y'all, y'all make sure y'all hit that link. Y'all support, you know what I'm saying? Get all the seasons, get the pecans, all the pecans. <laughs> <laughs>
Look, the pecan, I'm going to okay. win, win this contest. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm, right. buying, I'm buying votes right now. So, you know, that's, okay. that's how elections in this country go these days. So I'm buying votes. All right. So you vote pecan and you're going to either get a spice or you're going to get a Louisiana Monami t-shirt. So let us know what's up. All right. So y'all, after y'all watch this video, I will be posting a poll on YouTube. So then, and then we'll announce the winner. And let us know what's up. Yep. So yes, in yes. the meantime, in between time, you guys go and get your unknown on. Go to Amazon Prime. Go ahead, stream it. Hashtag unknown. If you want to go ahead on and get your, thr your thrill ride on, because Lord have mercy, I'm still shaking in my boots. Uh -oh. Check that out. And then also we got on Thursday, we've got a rich Christmas dropping on BET Plus. So check your girl out, baby. Yes, yes. Denise, thank you so much for pulling up on the Lionel B Show. Definitely look forward to all your projects you got going on. And also re-watching other ones because now I can watch it and be like, she's actually nice. So that's, <laughs> that's what's up. Great acting, though. Great acting. You're amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Just see, that's what I keep saying. I'm humbled because I'm like, wow, absolutely. I was obviously, like, really convincing. I'll take it. Oh, yeah. It. <laughs> you did your thing. You did your thing. <laughs> thank you. No problem. You have a blessed day, and thank you so much for pulling up. All right. You do the same, okay? Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. And you can take my show on the go by subscribing to the Lionel B Show podcast available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Breaker, and more. On my podcast, you get everything you love about the Lionel B Show, raw and unfiltered, and even exclusive episodes only available on my podcast. Subscribe now. Peeps, the cryptocurrency market is a billion dollar industry. And I know y'all like Lionel B, every industry is a billion dollar industry. But I'm letting you in on an easy money opportunity with a tiny minimal one-time investment, meaning you'll never pay again. Do you don't want to work forever just to pay bills? Or are you trying to see a meal? Now, members of our team are making thousands of dollars in just four days quick fact if you invested 1k in bitcoin you would now have 10 billion right now now if you invested in ethereum you would have 5.5 million there is a reason why guys like bitcoin ronnie can purchase the most expensive his items without worrying about the price tag send me a dm on instagram at official lionel b to get signed up and start doubling your money in just one day